No one but he who has partaken thereof can understand the keen delight of hunting the lonely lands. Theodore Roosevelt, Bighorn Mountains, Wyoming, 1893. Words to live by. This is a story told through the eyes of a hunter. A story of wild things, wild places, and mostly a story of the land. In this case, wild public land. Your land. Our land. Land connects us all. People, <laughs> place, and food. Taking food directly from these lands forms the lens through which you see this world, the natural world. Your view of land is forever changed. He's done that before. Come on, boys. I love these wild places. They strengthen our bodies, build our friendships, fuels our enthusiasm, and its unforgiving ruggedness serves as a reminder that it is the land who owns us. This is a normal thing when you have a friend like Wade. When I was in college and he and I were running together, he would bail me out of all kinds of predicaments. How many years ago was that? Uh, 20. 33 years ago. 30, was it that long? On these scouting days, anticipation holds my mind. Excitement abounds and my past failures are replaced by optimism. I'm ready. All right. Ready. Let's go do it. An opening morning can never come soon enough. These dark morning hikes are fueled by hope, the day not yet spoiled by the reality of missed chances. I often wonder, is success just a series of failures? The failures and the struggles in hunting are what give me appreciation. And when you hunt, frustration is okay. It's part of what adds to the fulfillment. It increases my gratitude, and hopefully it hones my edge. It's hard to explain why these lonely lands attract me, knowing I'll fail nine out of 10 times. Yet, I get to define myself by how I respond and how I push forward.
I hunt wild places because I want something harder. I don't come here, I don't spend the effort, the sweat, the grind to get here because I want something easy. I don't want a guarantee. In my 50s, you realize that probably not gonna stomp a lot of these places ever again. Health and time has changed that perspective where you no longer think about the next one, rather you appreciate the current one. And I'm sure the day will come that I won't be able to do it. And when that day comes, I hope I don't become one of these people who advocate for more roads and just for my own purpose. I hope instead I advocate for less roads and more backcountry and more wild places. Places where the elk and the deer and the bear and the whatever it is has the advantage. I don't know how you can come to a place like this that's untouched by the hand of man and not be an advocate for more of it. If every politician came and sat right where I sit right now, if they'd spent the night in the tent like I did last night, listen to Elf Bugle right outside your tent. There'd be a lot more of this country in America, not less.
right now. There he is, right there. Yeah, he's dead. That was his last kick. A lot of emotions right now. The thought of an uh, amazing experience in a wilderness area I've always dreamed of hunting. I never have the right words to express the gratitude. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. There's not very many places in the world that you can go do this or anyone could be lucky enough to drive a tag and come and do this. That's part of being an American. The greatest country on earth has the greatest conservation story, has the greatest public estate. I've reconciled that this food business isn't fair. It's life, but not fair. That one animal dies so others can eat. This bull provides us food. And more importantly, his death makes us the guardians of these elk and the public lands that sustain them. These are the public lands of America. They're your lands. Treat them that way. Fight for them, conserve them, protect them, defend them. They're the greatest accumulation of undistributed wealth in the world. And we're lucky that we own them. This land is your land. This land is your land. This land is my land! This land is our land. This land is my land. This land is our land.